Hello, in this video, I want to talk about the main reasons for international trade, which is a difference in relative price. In this video, we will uh, look at how these relative price differences occur, and then we're going to allow for international trade at some appropriate terms of trade, and then we're going to look what the welfare implications are. So, the setup is that we have two countries country H and country F, and one good, say good T. So we have two countries, home and foreign, producing, say, tablets, uh, but they are different from each other. And these differences will then give us a reason for international trade. So the first thing we're going to notice here is that I have specified the demand curve and the supply curve for country H up here. And the same is true for country F down there. And if you look at these carefully, you will notice that I have assumed that consumers are exactly the same in the two countries. They have the same demand curve. But because of various differences, such as uh, different access to technology, different access to resources, different prices for resources, we have that the two countries' supply functions are different. You also notice I put the, the, both the functions in inverse form and in its regular form. And that's true for both. And, uh, and the reason is that I want you to be able to go you know, from one expression to the other functional form. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, the step number one here, is to find the equilibrium relative price in the two countries. So uh, for country one, we can see that the equilibrium is, of course, where demand and supply intersect. So I'm just going to set the demand and supply equal to each other. The inverse demand equals inverse supply. And then I'm going to solve for the equilibrium quantity, which is, of course, and 800 divided by 1.25 is 640. And if I plug that quantity into either the demand or the supply function, I get that the, the price in the home country is going to be 360. Let's do the same thing for country F. So equilibrium for country F, I'm setting the, the same inverse demand function equal to their supply function, which is different. I solve for the, the quantity that we will have in this country. And 900 divided by 1.2 is 750. I'm going to plug that into either the demand or supply function to get the relative price, which is, of course, 250. Now, okay, so we have that the relative price in the two countries are different from each other because uh, their supply functions are different from each other. And, of course, if we look at the patterns of trade here, we would expect that the foreign country, because they can produce the good or will produce the good at a lower relative price. They will be the exporter of this good, T, and the home country should be the one to import the good because their price is higher. The next question is then, uh, what will the, you know, what will the terms of trade, what will the world price equal to, and how much will be traded between these two countries? In order to determine the terms of trade, we can do two things. We can just assume a terms of trade, which is less satisfying, or we can assume that the two countries will have balanced trade, which means that uh, one country's exports must equal the other country's imports. So what I'm going to go, I'm going to go to the next page, and uh, let's uh, let's assume balanced trade. Or another way to think of this is that these two countries actually make up our entire quote-unquote world. And therefore, when we add, you know, the two countries' demand curves, so DH plus DF, that is world demand, would have to equal 
world supply. So this is what I'm going to be using in order to find my terms of trade. Uh, of course, we know what the, the demand uh, curves are here. And this is uh, now we're thinking in terms of quantity. So I will have to uh, use our regular demand and supply functions here when I do this uh, exercise. So, of course, demand in the home country is 1000 minus P plus demand in the foreign country. And we assume that consumers are exactly the same. And then we have supply in the home country minus 800 plus 4P plus supply in the foreign country minus 500 plus 5P. All right, I'm just going to rearrange this here. So we have uh, 2,000 minus 2P equals minus 1,300 plus 9P. All right, so this P here, this is going to be the price that uh, gives us the outcome that world demand equals world supply. So this P here is going to be our terms of trade, our world price. So let's find that one. So if I just rearrange it, I get 3300 equals 11 P, P, and let's just call this P T O T because it's the, the terms of trade, is equal to 300. All right, so just as a quick check, uh, we notice that this makes sense because we would think the, the world price will be in between the two countries' uh, relative prices. So 300 is in between 250 and 360. So that makes sense. All right, so uh, the question then is, next is how much will be traded? Well, uh, so if you look at the foreign country first, they will be the ones to export. So they will export a certain number of goods, but the exports will be, of course, equal to what the foreign country produces minus what the foreign country consumes by itself. So if I just plug that in, and of course we're going to assume that the, the, the relative, relevant price is the terms of trade here. So supply is minus 500 plus 5P minus the demand, 1000 minus P. And again, we assume that P equals 300, the terms of trade. So if I just uh, simplify this, we get, of course, minus 1500 plus 5 times 300 plus 300. Which is equal to minus 1500 plus 1500 plus 300. So we expect that they will export import, uh, export 300 units. And if everything is right, then the home country will be importing exactly the same. Uh, I just like to make sure that is in fact true. So I'm going to do the same exercise here. So I have 1000 minus P minus the home country supply curve. Again, evaluated at the terms of trade of 300. So we have um, 1800, because the minus minus makes plus. Uh, minus P minus 4P, so that's minus 5P. Plug in the 300, and we have 1800 minus 5 times 300, which is 1500, 300. All right, so we again have double checked that we have balanced trade because exports equal imports. All right, finally, we just want to do a welfare analysis in the next page. Okay, so in order to do our welfare analysis, I want to first draw my demand and supply curves. And I'm going to be focusing on the home country here. So, of course, we have uh, price and quantity on our axes. I'm going to draw in the demand curve for the home country, which starts at 1,000, and then I have a slope of minus 1. So it goes from 1,000 to 1,000. And then the supply curve, the inverse supply curve, is minus 200 plus 0.25Q. So I'm going to draw my supply curve here. 
So this is SH and this is DH. And, uh, you know, when we uh, started out, we knew that the equilibrium price and quantity was equal to 360 and 640. And then, of course, uh, we found the terms of trade, which I can just draw in as a straight line here. The terms of trade is going to be 300. And uh, we can also, of course, find out what the quantity demanded is at that terms of trade. So, uh, you know, for the home country, Q equals 1,000 minus P. So when P equals 300, uh, the quantity will be 700. So over here, we have that quantity demand is going to be 700. And quantity supply was equal to minus 800 plus 4p. So again, when I plug in p equals 300, we get 900 times 1200. So, well, plus 1200. So that's 400. So our domestic supply is going to be equal to 400. And of course, the difference here is how much they have to import, which is 300. All right, so uh, in order to do welfare analysis, we're going to be looking at consumer surplus, producer surplus, and, uh, and of course, total surplus. And what we do then is just compare uh, the consumer and producer surplus before and after free trade. So in our talk key, that is the situation when we have no trade, uh, consumer surplus is going to be equal to, you can see the difference, you know, the area below the demand curve, above the price that consumers pay. So it would be 1,000 minus 360 times 640 divided by 2. All right, so that's just equal to 204,800. Producer surplus is the area above the supply curve, below the price that they receive. So 360 minus 200 times 640 divided by two. And that's equal to 51,200. And then total surplus is just adding up consumer surplus and producer surplus for a total of 256,000. All right, so this is when we have no trade. What about free trade? So if we allow for trade, obviously uh, now consumers and producers will be facing the terms of trade. So that's going to change uh, the amount of consumer and producer surplus. So to do consumer surplus will be 1,000 minus the price, which is 300, times the quantity. And now they consume 700 divided by 2. So that's, uh, you know, they are better off, 245,000. And if you look at the producers, they are only producing 400, and then divide that by two, and you get uh, that their produced surplus is 20,000. Add them all up, and, oops, total surplus is 265,000. Obviously, there were some changes here. You can see that in terms of consumers, they are better off. They gain 41,200. But producers are worse off. They lost. Uh, no, they... Nope, wait. They gained 40,200. Uh, but producers lost, lost 31,200. So they, they change in terms of Benefit to consumers, subtracting out the loss to producers is 9,000, which of course is the difference between the total surplus uh, before and after the free trade was allowed. All right, that's actually it. So this is how we go about finding uh, the reason for trade, being relative prices, finding the terms of trade, and then conducting welfare analysis.